I'm Paul, and this is my 1968 V35A Experimental Bonanza TIO 541, 380 horsepower. This is a one-of-a-kind Bonanza, the fastest doctor killer ever made. Your typical V-tail Bonanza has between 225 and 300 horsepower, whereas this beast cranks out 380 horses. In the 1980s, Daryl Grenemeyer took this airplane experimental, strengthened the tail, and slapped a 380 horsepower turbocharged engine from a Beechcraft Baron, making this the fastest V-tail Bonanza ever made. This aircraft has four to five seats, depending on configuration, and a nice large baggage compartment. In this video, we're gonna to talk to Paul and learn more about this unique aircraft and then take it up in the air. Well, like most people, I think, uh, started young, looking at airplanes, seeing uh, pictures and, and so on. I would start drawing pictures of airplanes as a young person. Always had that interest. Uh, went off to college, studied uh, aviation maintenance technology at uh, Purdue, and uh, carried through with that interest and got my private pilot license. I uh, went and worked as an engineer in California on the uh, stealth bomber. And uh, most of the people I was working with uh, were former Air Force pilots who uh, were quite curious as to why a young person would be interested in working in a, a uh, building and uh, with no windows. And so uh, I got to hear a lot of their stories and of course I got interested as well. And uh, so made an application to uh, the Navy and got uh, into the Navy and uh, flew as a F-18 pilot in the Navy. Uh, after that, I tried to get in the airlines and struggled for some time because the airlines weren't really hiring. So I uh, did a lot of corporate flying. Really enjoyed the corporate flying. It's, a, it's quite an adventure. You go around the world, you have a lot of responsibility. You have to do a lot of planning. And so uh, I enjoyed that aspect of it. After that, uh, of course, the natural progression would be to look for better paying jobs. And of course, the airlines uh, trended to go that direction. So I eventually got uh, hired uh, into the airlines and I've been flying as a uh, airline captain for 21 years now in the uh, Airbus. When I started looking for airplanes, I came across barnstormers and trade a plane and I uh, went through those and I saw the advertisement for this airplane and it was uh, very interesting because it's, it's sold as the highest uh, powered piston bonanza in the world and uh, also the fastest. Uh, there's quite a history with Daryl Greenemeyer with this airplane who designed and built this. Uh, him and Bruce York put a uh, TIO 541, 380 horsepower motor in this and it's a beautiful installation. The airplane flies just tremendously. But I think what most intrigued me about it was the speed, also the high altitude aspect. Um, it looked challenging to me. Uh, normally there's a 300 horsepower motor in it. This is a turbocharged engine with a large block cylinders. On top of that, uh, this turbocharged engine likes to go even higher. Uh, right now I'm a uh, RVSM limited to 27,000 feet. I have not gotten the airplane up to there. There's, there's some issues and problems with flying at high altitude flight. Uh, you know, I'm good at the lower altitudes, but oxygen masks are critical and quality oxygen masks are very important. And so I, I'm very careful about it and I uh, haven't ventured into that aspect of it yet because I'm not prepared. Indicated airspeed around lower altitudes, I think a normal uh, V35 is going to be in the 150 uh, uh, knot range. I'm in the 165 knot plus. When we talk about true airspeed, which is real numbers, I'm a much higher number. I'm in the 185 at a conservative number. If I really was racing or going fast, I could be 210 knots true, upwards of 220 knots true. But then uh, interesting balances come into play as to uh, fuel economy versus speed. There's a balance there uh, of what uh, reality plays into uh, the value of flying that fast. The V-tail has less drag, less weight, uh, because it has one less control surface. Uh, with the experimental certificate, uh, I really seek out uh, flying events. It's also a racing category airplane, so I'm looking 
to always find uh, racing events. It's something that I'm very interested in learning more about. Colorado is very difficult for racing. One is our weather is very unpredictable, very windy. It can be very bumpy. We might even get some bumps today uh, with the clouds the way they are. But um, most of the races are either farther, Arizona, a lot in the Midwest, but um, it's very difficult for me to get to, for one. Well, you ready to go take this thing up in the air then? Sh sure. All right, yeah, let's do it. With the interview over, it was time to go fly. This is, is this thicker glass than normal too? It is. So is that is this is thicker glass? Is that because uh, you take it up higher, or why? No, they just installed it that way. But it's yeah. really a, a benefit. Sure. Uh, in fact, I just took a bird strike. Uh, oh, did you really? But we could go. Yeah, that's definitely. I mean, that's almost fifty percent thicker than your normal one. I would think. And I think one of the owners, one of the previous owners, was a big racer. Oh, okay. And so. Uh, so you're going to be down low, and you probably do need some protection and so on. So, Centennial Ground Bonanza 8466 November Charlie 1 Hotel VFR Southeast requesting uh, 35 right. Bonanza 8466 November Centennial Ground on 35 right taxi via Alpha. 35 right via Alpha run up complete. Well, you know, I mean, if this was uh, normally aspirated, I mean, you know, you'd be taking off at 24 inches, you know, or something. No? Right. So you're getting extra seven inches of manifold pressure on takeoff which i mean that made a pretty big difference my last uh last airplane i had was a turbo twin comanche but it had the ray j like manual wastegates now how did that work i've never used those you just had to you know it had a it had two more knobs because it was twin and it uh so you know you gave it throttle and then then you would ro screw in the boost as you wanted it and then but the thing was you had to remember on your way down unboost because right. you know Got full boost and you're up at 15,000 feet and you just send down to 7,000 feet and blow up in it. So it's real tricky. Yeah, I mean, it's not tricky, you just gotta pay attention. Um, I never had a problem with it. But I mean, uh, you know, when I would have to use the turbo chart, like I took off out of Telluride in it at the time. You know, you're at 9,000 feet, so I mean, you all the way throttle in and then you're rolling in the turbochargers as rolling too. So just to share some information right now, we're uh, just a little more than half, almost three quarters in the left main. Here's our right main, it's half tank. Okay. Here's our tip tanks. We got a little bit in the left tip. We don't, we're not gonna use the tip tanks today, but, and here's the right tank, it's well over half. Okay. So a lot of fuel out there. Right now we're feeding off one of the tip tanks. When I get down here, I'll switch up to a main tank. So we'll be on the mains for takeoff. We'll use the left mains, it's the fullest tank. And you said it's got a hundred, how many gallons does it have total? 137 gallons, at least a nine hour range, really closer to 10 hours, depends upon how you operate it, how right. high. Yeah. All that kind of interesting stuff when you write, start running performance and uh, you figure your winds, you know, you go eastbound, you're going to want to carry that tailwind, so you're going to go high. Right. Um, I've had it up to 23,000. That's really a nice number for it, 23, 25. Um, but uh, in those altitudes, it's it's hard if you have passengers. You want to make sure that they're uh, they understand hypoxia. And you, so if they fall asleep just naturally, right, it makes me nervous a little bit. <laughs> so right. you got to kind of yeah. There's a balance there. So. Do you have uh, oxygen built in, or you have a bottle? Built-in oxygen is a huge bottle. I took it out to move the CD forward, and I use a portable bottle for it. Okay. So. But it's like a 43 cubic. Wow, Bonanza 66 November for uh, free exchange. Bonanza 66 November, monitor share 1.9. 189. Bonanza 8466 November, Centennial Tower Winds 33012, Gust 18, Southeast approved to runway 35 right, cleared for takeoff. Clear for takeoff 35 right, Bonanza 8466 November. All right, we've already gone through all these. I'll just repeat them anyway. Seatbelt signs for, or seatbelts, sign. <laughs> seatbelts are on, compass is already checked, cow flaps are open, flaps are set. Propeller is forward, pitot heat is not required, time is not going to be required. we got hops, right? 
Windows doors, you've already verified those run left main tank. And we are in altitude on the transponder. Fan is off, ammeters check, mixture is coming forward, boost pump coming on. Crossman here today. Yeah. Everybody has a 6 6 November for on course. Uh, 6 6 November on course, proof. All right, here. Afternoon Tower, Nova 527, Echo Foxtrot's with you, visual 35 right. There we go. So, 527, Echo Foxtrot, Centennial Tower, winds 31013, gust 18, runway 35 right, clear land. Clear land, 35 right, Nova 527. Yeah, for being high altitude like this, it's climbing pretty well. I mean, 15, wow, 16, 1700 feet a minute, we're our, you know, at 6,500 feet altitude. Good. So, your normal true when you're just cruising is 185 or so? Yeah, that would be a normal cruise number. That's like econ. Yeah. The real uh, gem of this thing is the propeller, I believe. Yeah. If I was a real engineer, that's what I would say is the uh, the real neat thing about this airplane. The big two-bladed two uh, propeller. Yeah, it, well, yeah, you know what? Yeah, it's pretty thick, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Boy, it can, it's nice out here. It's not too bad. not too bumpy today. But right. One of the biggest bumps I ever been through is coming out of here, headed south, and we were coming through like 14 or 15 thousand feet. And thankfully, we didn't have any passengers in the back. But I mean, I, I still had my shoulder harnesses on, but my co-pilot, oh, yeah. he didn't. He had already taken a shot. He just had his lap belt on. He hit the ceiling. Yeah. And we broke a bunch of dishes in the back and everything. Man, I, I mean, I would have hit the ceiling if I was if I didn't have my shoulder harness on. Probably my first experience with that was out in a 421 out here in yeah. a. We were flying over the hills, over near Buena Vista, and uh, and it uh, we hit a bump like that. A seat belt was cinched tight. November frequency changes approved. Good day. And as a four six six November, good day. Glad you had it down cinched tight. Yeah, I still hit the ceiling though. Oh really? Just yeah. like you said. Yeah. So our indicated is around one hundred and sixty. So our true would be up there closer to over one hundred eighty or so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, nowadays, you know, with all the graphic engine monitors and all that, you, you, there's so much more you can do with the engines and, and really, oh, all right. You're flying. Got it. Yeah, so the, uh, I wouldn't fly an airplane without an engine monitor anymore because yeah. it's just too much information. So like when we do the run-up, I get a good take of what, if I have a fouled spark plug right, or if I have a cold cylinder, that kind of stuff. Just gives you a lot of information. Yeah, this is pretty responsive here. Yeah. Feels good. I always like the feel of a banana. I mean, it's so much, I mean, you know, we're not even close to touching here. You right. know what I mean? If you need trim, there's manual trim. Unfortunately, they don't have electric on that side. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Well, okay. That's fine. If you need, just tell me. I can click some or you can nah, get okay. it. So. And November 6th, November, you may have traffic 12 o'clock, 3 miles, opposite direction, same altitude. Turn right, southwest down. Got him. Traffic's in sight, Bonanza 4666 six, November, turn it. And we're going to go uh, westerly. Good catch. Six, six, November, radar contact, one three miles southeast of Centennial at 8,300. Uh, and I missed that. Where did you uh, want flat flying to? No, we're just out here south of uh, all that high traffic area. I just wanted to hold hands with you a little bit uh, for some protection. How's that? So this helps me uh, keep my proficiency skills up with an analog panel. Right. These are things I'm not familiar with in the glass panel. Right. So it helps me keep up to speed with that and it actually improves my scan quite a bit. Right. It doesn't take long though. You, if you don't fly every week and a half or so, start losing some of those skills. Yeah. So this side right here gives a display, gives us the outer ring of the class Bravo. Okay. So right now we're doing pretty good. I'm just giving you an idea. Sure. Yeah, approach Bonanza 6-6 November. 
Uh, yes, sir, we're going to do a couple uh, maneuvers out here, and then uh, when we get done, I'd like to practice a uh, ILS and BFR conditions, 3-5 right, Centennial. November 6, 6 November. Approved as a question, advise when you like uh, either vectors or to join the approach at one of the fixes. Okay, we're going to practice a couple maneuvers, do some turns, and then uh, I'll give you a call up, and uh, we'll accept the vectors. So feel free to do whatever you want to do. You want to do some turning? Yeah, sure, why not? I'll do a... That, that's it? Yeah, we can head back. All yeah. right, why don't you take us westerly and I'll let them know we're on All a right. west heading. As A4666 November, turning's done. We're turning left, heading 270, ready uh, for vectors. 466 November, Roger, flighting 280 and maintain VFR at or below 9000. Heading 280, VFR at or below 9000, Bonanza 8466 November. So I got an antiquated <laughs> altitude alert. Right, right. So we'll just put that at 9 as a reminder so you can begin a slow descent. All right. So I've got the ILS dialed up. And when I went and interviewed for an airline in Dubai, I actually got the job and I worked there for a year. But that's one thing they had us do was a raw data ILS. You know, and we were in the 737 simulator. I'd never flown a 737. They that's what, what, what it's about. You know, they told you the numbers and all that. But it's mostly just seeing if you had the scan to be able to do all that stuff. Oh, exactly. And uh, they had a hard time. I mean, because they were bringing in... It was a brand new airline, Fly Dubai, and uh, they were, you know, a lot of Americans were over there because everybody was laid off from airlines, and then we had a bunch of Aussies and English, and uh, you know, then they started trying to bring in some of the local guys, and uh, they couldn't pass the check rides. Oh, yeah. Because they only had 250 hours, and it's like, you know, I, I don't, it's... One nine or six seven golf summer approach, you know, two nine or seven zero plan. That's just not enough time to sit right seat in the jet. You know? Number 66 November, advise you have a hotel at the uh, city. Affirmative hotel, Bonanza 8466 November. And we'll be a full stop. Thank you. you know, it's kind of the latest thing with that, with the 737 MAX. I mean, that thing's happened a few times in the States with American pilots, but they recognized what it was and turned the system off, whereas right. the guys overseas didn't have the training. I think now there's such a confidence issue. It's going to be an interesting dilemma how they resolve it. Yeah. Well, when I... When I got the job for that airline in Dubai, I had 5,000 hours, something like that. And, uh, but I didn't have, I didn't have any, you know, 737 time. But I had, there was one captain I flew with, but I had more flight time than him. Yeah. But he was captain on the airplane. But right. he, he got he got in the right seat of the 737 when he had 250 hours, you know? Well, that, uh, what's interesting is the uh, latest incident, uh, the first officer was really, really junior, yeah. but the captain kind of was too. Yeah. Well, you only have like 8,000 hours, which is, I and mean, a, that's a lot of time, but it's not. And only a 1,400 in type, Yeah. and only 100 something in max. Yeah. So it's green on green. Yeah. So what we'll do is, uh, so it eventually I'll fly the ILS, sure. Three, and then you'll be my check pilot. <laughs> All right. You'll be my eyes. Okay. And I'll just uh, try to practice IFR here. Okay. But keep flying for a little bit until we get a little closer. Sure. Well, I remember having the place they always told us to come over to Cherry Creek Reservoir. Yep. Coming in. Bonanza 6 6 November 2 rating 320. Doing the approach, practice approach crew and the separate service provided. Maintain maximum forward speed as long as practical. Best forward speed 320 to heading to join. Cleared practice ILS 35 right. Bonanza 8466 November. There's the airport. Hey, right, you want it? Uh, I'll keep going for a little bit. Let's do a slow descent, 8,000, but a real slow one. You don't have to kind of creep along. Number 66 November, contact Centennial Tower, 118.9. Good day. 189, thanks for your help. Bonanza 8466 November. Bonanza 8466 November, five miles straight in, three five right hotel, full stop. Localizer's live. Nice. Runway 466 November 10, Centennial Tower, wind 32012, runway 35 right, clear to land. Clear to land, 35 right, Bonanza 8466 November. I got control. Yeah, I guess I ought to practice now. Yeah, right. So you can go ahead and throw the gear for me. All right, you're down. Yep. 2 Romeo Delta traffic is following as a beam, the approach and on in the downwind. Bonanza 66 November, approach one at his best forward speed, uh, 
We've already begun our transition. Is that right with you? And as of 6th November, if you could keep the speed up as long as practical, try to give the citation seven miles in the trail to follow you. And as of 6th November, Roger. If it becomes a problem, I can break off. Uh, I'm practicing the ILS. I can break off and use 3-5 uh, left if it helps you. But as of 6th November, uh, what you got right now should be good. All right, just let me know. That's the nice thing about a Bonanza is you can still do 130 knots on approach, you know. Yeah. Left clear to touch and go, wind 330 at 10. Sorry, I stepped on you, what's up to your room, Delta, we got the traffic on final side, 35 left. So I'm going down to 6085. I look up 7, Charlie Delta, across the runway at 28, landing at X-Jet Pilot Center, it's used caution. It's a little tricky since he wants me to go fast. Yeah. But, gears down, I got a green light, and then that's our nose gear indicator okay. right there. Mixture's coming in a little bit, boost pump's coming on. And this is where it kind of helps the airplane a little bit if I'll bring in the RPM again. And actually, I'll start creating a little more drag. A little bit of flap coming in. Good, on the localizer, on the glide slope. All right, I'm still on the instruments. I'm going to start slowing a little bit. Charlie Pop, I looked at our transponder. It looks like we're not doing pressure altitude data. Can you approve our operation of the traffic pattern for a little while? Just a five, Charlie Pop, open. Thank you. There's that Cessna turn in final for 3-5 left. Get right out here. Okay, insight, thanks. Bonanza 66 six, November, traffic again to left turning base final set. This is from parallel. Insight, Bonanza 66 six, November. All right, I'm going to break off a little early. There's too much traffic. Okay. All right, pull flaps are in. One check again. Wind 320 at 12. Bad. All right, well done. Nice crosswind landing. It's amazing how many you know you lined up on the windward side of the runway. So many people line up just in the middle, and by the time they land, they're on the other on side. The side. You know? It's a little tricky since the right tank's a little full. All right. Oh, you did good. Banana right. six six November continues on the runway. Turn right Alpha nine or contact ground. Alpha nine and ground Banana six six November. Yeah, well, thanks for taking me out. Right, Absolutely, I enjoyed it. Sorry, I was a little nervous for a while. It took me. <laughs> yeah, you're good. I'm just not accustomed to that. Yeah. Hey, it's a different, uh, yeah, takes me to the early cross. Hey, well, Paul, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for coming out. Yeah, I enjoyed it very much. Very cool machine. So yeah. very, very, they should have, they should have put that engine on in the first place. So. <laughs> exactly. Thank you very much. I enjoyed hey, it. Sure, no problem. For it. Well, thanks for watching another episode of Flying Duels. Really cool uh, machine there. Glad we got to go up in it. So please click that like button and subscribe. And if you're really enjoying it, it's patreon.com slash flying doodles. Let's go flying together sometime.